Two massive magma chambers have been spotted beneath Yellowstone National Park. Beneath the bubbling geysers and hot springs of Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming lies a volcanic hotspot that has fueled some of the largest eruptions on Earth. Geologists have now fully imaged the underground plumbing system and have discovered not one, but two magma chambers beneath the giant volcano. The major novelty is that we uncovered a deeper, larger magma reservoir in the lower crust, said study author Xin Hua Huan, a seismologist at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. Scientists have known about plumes that carry molten rock from deep in the mantle to a region about 60 kilometers, 37 miles, below the surface. They have also imaged a shallow magma chamber about 10 kilometers, 6 miles, below the surface, containing about 10,000 cubic kilometers, 3,700 cubic miles, of molten material. But now they have found a deeper magma chamber, 4.5 times larger, that lies between 20 and 50 kilometers, 12 and 31 miles, below the surface. They found the missing link between the mantle plume and the shallow magma chamber, said Peter Cervelli, a geophysicist in Anchorage, Alaska, who works at the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. The discovery itself doesn't increase the chances of an eruption, which is driven by the emptying of the shallow chamber. But the deeper chamber means that the shallow chamber can be refilled over and over again. Knowing that you have this extra reservoir tells you that you can have much larger volumes erupting on a relatively short time scale, said co-author Victor Tsai a geophysicist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. The discovery, reported online today in Science, also confirms a long-suspected model for some volcanoes, in which a deep chamber of melted basalt, a dense rock rich in iron and magnesium, feeds a shallower chamber filled with a lighter, silicon-rich rock called rhyolite. The researchers used seismometers to measure the noise of the earthquakes to create a sort of sonogram of the Earth's crust. When an earthquake passes through molten material, the seismic waves slow down. The team interpreted these low-velocity areas as magma chambers, even though these chambers are still mostly solid rock and contain only a small amount of molten melt. Distant earthquakes are useful for imaging deep structures, such as the mantle, and local earthquakes can help see shallow chambers. Huang said his study is the first time the two types of data have been combined to see the middle depths, and the deeper chambers, in a way. His team used 11 seismometers from Earthscope US Array to listen for deep quakes and 69 seismometers from several local seismic networks to collect data from shallower quakes. The study is, a comprehensive view of the magma system from the top of the eruption into the crust, said Alan Levender a geophysicist at Rice University in Houston, Texas. But he said the study raises an interesting new question that could be the subject of future research. 
With the North American tectonic plate moving westward a few centimeters per year over a steady mantle plume, he expected to see the two chambers, which are inside the plate, shift to the west of the plume. Instead, they shifted to the east of the plume. This didn't quite match our expectations, he said. But Huang said that with rough dimensions now available for all the major magma bodies, modelers can try to understand how magma moved in previous eruptions and why the chambers were where they were. After this study, they can get better numbers for this kind of modeling. At Yellowstone, many studies have attempted to answer these questions using high-resolution images of the subsurface developed using seismic tomography. Although there is some variation among studies, a region of low wave velocity at middle to upper crustal depths, 5 to 15 kilometers, or 3 to 9 miles, is thought to represent Yellowstone's silicious magma reservoir. Typically, this anomaly is associated with a seismic wave velocity reduction of less than 10% compared to the surrounding crust, indicating that the magma reservoir is composed of about 10% melt. Thus far, most tomographic studies of Yellowstone have been based on minimizing the difference between observed and predicted seismic wave travel times using theoretical estimates. In this approach, it is assumed that seismic wave travel times are only sensitive to wave velocities along an infinitely narrow path connecting the source and receiver. However, in reality, seismic waves have a finite wavelength and are sensitive to wave velocities in the volume surrounding the path, not in a narrow region. Furthermore, this method does not accurately account for the subtle deflection effects of seismic waves caused by low-wave velocity objects such as magma reservoirs. These characteristics can mask the seismic signature of the magma reservoir making it difficult to image accurately with this form of seismic tomography. For decades, seismologists have turned their attention to using more accurate wave propagation physics in tomography, although this is challenging because it usually requires computationally intensive numerical methods to accurately simulate 3D wave propagation in complex Earth models. One method to overcome this challenge is to accurately simulate synthetic seismograms, which can allow the development of tomographic models that are able to match every jitter in the observed seismic waveform. In other words, it can take full advantage of the rich information contained in seismic waves. As such, this technique is often referred to as full waveform tomography although in practice these models usually still rely on fitting a particular type of seismic waveform. Only relatively recent advances in supercomputing have full waveform tomography become possible for regional or global scale applications, but applications of full waveform tomography for imaging volcanic systems have been few.